Okay, uh, Veronica, let me know she's on her way and we can start without her. Uh, we are a little pressed for time, so why don't we go ahead and get started with closing arguments? Uh, thank you, Vice Chair, members of the board. In addition to um, accepting the facts pled in um, Mr. Peterson's complaint, uh, there has been additional evidence today uh, to prove that Vanessa Allred, either individually or doing business as Allred Consulting, has sought official action from the commission during the period before Commissioner Piscotti's primary race and after. As such, she is a restricted donor. Let's look at the facts that were presented. Um, when we played back um, Ms. Piscotti's testimony, she refers to Vanessa Allerode, admits that she's a restricted donor, but states that since she recused herself from the meeting uh, where Santa Lina was involved after this meeting she had on August 3rd, there was no conflict of interest. I'll explain later why uh, that's actually not true and not what the law states. Mr. Grady testified that Ms. Allered facilitated meetings on behalf of Western Albuquerque Land Holdings. Western Albuquerque Land Holdings is involved in Santa Elena development on the west side. That these um, contacts with Mr. Grady occurred over the past one to one and a half years. He described these, the role of Ms. Allered as creating opportunities for applicants. Um, this is seeking official action or facilitating seeking official action on behalf of um, her lobbyist clients. I want to move to exhibit one now and explain uh, where to find the evidence that I'm pointing to. Um, but I thought the, the county attorney wanted to, or to be present <laughs> to match these documents. If I'll come back this argument of Vanessa Allered being synonymous with Allered Consulting. What documents from Exhibit 1, and I will point out the pages to you, show is confusion and the way that Ms. Allered uses her business name and her uh, individual name interchangeably. Um, candidates, you'll see from these reports from the Secretary of State, refer to donations coming from Allered Consulting. She, as a lobbyist registered with the Secretary of State, has to disclose her political contributions and those of her employer. And she, matching, what we've done here is there's four candidates. Each time they list her as Vanessa Allered or Allered Consulting as the contributor, she reports them as Vanessa Allered in her individual capacity. So it is relevant in showing that although um, Ms. Piscotti might have reported the donation coming from Allered Consulting. It is one and the same as Vanessa Allered, and Vanessa Allered is the restricted donor. Also, in the testimony you heard um, from Ms. Uh, Piscotti, um, she describes the donation as coming from Ms. Allered. The testimony at the beginning of what was played back, as she said, as soon as I heard that Ms. Allered had sponsored a postcard mailer, she goes on to say she immediately reported it. So I don't want this board to get hung up on who's listed as the donor uh, on the report, because everyone understood, including Ms. Nix, 
that Vanessa Allered was providing an in-kind contribution to um, commissioner or then candidate Muscovy. Are you ready to match the? Yes. Yes. Okay. So going to um, exhibit one, the first report that's been certified by the Secretary of State is the May 2022 lobbyist report from Vanessa Allered. Uh, the second one is the October 2022 lobbyist report from Vanessa Allered. So we're using those two documents as how she's reporting her contributions compared to the subsequent um, reports of the candidates. Page five um, shows contributions made to Hernandez Eichenberg Lara in her own personal name. Uh, page nine of this packet shows additional contributions made uh, in her name. Page 20, 22 of Joshua Hernandez's campaign report shows him reporting it as Allered Consulting. Page 35 of uh, Tim Eichenberg's report shows Allered Consulting as the donor. Uh, page 45 from Damian Lara shows Allered Consulting as the donor. And page 71 um, from Damian Lara shows Allered Consulting as the donor. Whereas in each of those instances, she reports it as coming from herself. Um, the third report, the third document in this exhibit one is um, candidate Piscotti's 24 hour report, which is the subject of the complaint as being filed on July 7th, which was late. That is page nine. You also have. Council, to interrupt you, um, you said the last one was 75? 71. 71, okay, thank you. Okay. Um, you also um, have the link to look yourself at uh, candidate Piscotti's um, campaign reports, see that the Secretary of State did find she was in violation, issued a fine, and even though that fine was waived, it did show that she filed the report late. Right? In one of the pleadings uh, from Respondents Council, they state that um, she was not a restricted, Ms. Allered was not a restricted donor because she did not lobby Commissioner Piscotti prior to July 2022. But that's not how the Code of Conduct defines a restricted donor. The Code of Conduct defines a restricted donor as someone who seeks official action by an elected official, quote. And the gift and campaign country Contribution limits for restricted donors are absolute. There is nothing in the code that allows restricted donors to exceed that limit for one commissioner simply because the restricted donor lobbied a different commissioner. Once you are a restricted donor because you seek official action, you may not make a contribution to a person covered by the code of conduct in excess of $1,000, nor may you give a gift in excess of $100. Complainant has proven that Vanessa Allered individually or doing business as her Allered Consulting made a contribution to Commissioner Piscotti's re-election campaign. That contribution of $5,000 exceeds the limit for restricted donors. And the evidence shows that the contribution was not timely reported to the Secretary of State. As such, it was not lawfully made and reported in accordance with the election code. And because of that, the contribution is not exempted from the Code of Conduct's definition of gift. In the facts, she was fined for the late filing. The 24-hour report uh, shows that it was filed on July 7th. Um, there is an admission by Ms. Piscotti at the pre-hearing, and she, un she understood she got an in-kind contribution from um, Vanessa Allered. And the witness, Tara Nix, admits that there was an in-kind contribution from Vanessa, that she spoke to Vanessa um, Allery directly and accepted that contribution of a credit at a print shop. One piece uh, that I would ask the, the 
because uh, Ms. Piscotti was not here to testify, I would ask you to take judicial notice of whether Commissioner Piscotti uh, disclosed a gift from either Vanessa Allered or Allered Consulting to the county in 2022. Um, I wasn't able to uh, examine Ms. Piscotti over that issue. However, even if the board determines that the contribution should not be treated as a gift, the contribution violates the code's limit of $1,000 for a campaign, campaign contribution from a restricted donor. Now, getting into the conflict of interest and whether uh, Commissioner Piscotti should have recused herself from the vote to appoint Senator Maestas to the Senate, she admitted in the pre-hearing testimony or statement that she recused herself from the vote on the Santa Lita development after she learned of the restricted donor contribution from Ms. Allery. She has also admitted um, that she has recused herself from voting uh, concerning another campaign donor um, who was active in the Sawmill District. That is in the packet of exhibits uh, from the newspaper articles. But regardless of that, um, even though she acknowledges that there is a conflict of interest in voting on matters affecting a lobbyist client, it is implausible to defend how failure to recuse herself from voting to appoint a restricted donor's husband to a very prestigious legislative position is not also a conflict of interest. Ms. Allered exhibits four shows was Ms. Piscotti's largest contrib contributor to her campaign by an order of two and a half times. She gave $5,000, the next largest donor <clears throat> was $1,000. I mean, I'm sorry, $2,000. That is a substantial interest in matters affecting and her business and familiar relationships. If it was wrong to vote on a Santa Lina matter, she should have at least disclosed the potential for a conflict of interest to the commission prior to voting to appoint Senator Mastis. <clears throat> I just want to summarize pieces of the code, but again, they're in uh, the complaint, so I will go, I ask you to refer to that. Um, the code's declaration of policy 2-127 requires candidates and public servants to disclose personal interests, financial or otherwise, in matters affecting the county. As we've said before, a, a restricted donor includes a person or entity who seeks official action by an elected official, volunteer or employee. And official actions include, but are not limited to, the decision, decisions regarding legislation, approval of permits or development plans, or any other action or decision that is discretionary with an elected official or employee. Um, we heard testimony from Mr. Grady that Vanessa Allery facilitated those meetings with employees and, at least in one instance, a commissioner to seek approval of their plans. As I've said before, because Ms. Allery's contribution was not lawful and was not reported in accordance with the election code, the only election code that matters in this race is the Campaign Reporting Act. It is not exempted from the court ordinance, ordinance's definition of gift. Once she accepted an improper gift, the Code of Conduct states that any candidate or public servant who accepts a gift shall not allow receipt of that gift to influence in any way the execution or integrity of their official actions or decisions. And commissioners must not engage in improper influence over any county governmental decision and to disclose potential conflicts of interest and disqualify themselves from sub substantive discussions or votes when a potential conflict of interest is present. Mr. Peterson has met his burden of proof that Commissioner Piscotti violated the Code of Conduct. He asks that you assess the appropriate penalties for these violations. 
<clears throat> and he asks that you censure Commissioner Piscotti for failure to recuse herself or even disclose the potential of a conflict of interest from the vote that appointed Senator Munistus to the vacant Senate seat in 2022. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Councilor. Vice Chair, Chuck McCune here, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, is Miss Allery the only owner of Allery Cons Consulting? Or is there other owners? She lists herself in the filings as an owner. Are there any other owners with her? And you don't know? I don't know. I am aware that there's an Allery Consulting LLC, but that's not at issue in this matter. It is my legal argument that a doing business as is a fictitious name for the individual so that there could not be another owner in Allery Consulting. Whether there is in their LLC, I don't know. Thank you. <clears throat> Any more questions from the board? Okay, hearing none, uh, do I have a motion to enter closed session for deliberation? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Let's uh, enter deliberative session.
We're back on the record in Peterson versus Piscotti. Let the minutes reflect that the matters discussed in the closed meeting were limited only to those specified in the motion or notice for closure and no action was taken. This is Paul Chavez. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Um, okay, having come out of that deliberative session, the board has reached a decision. We will release a written opinion on or before our deadline of February 8th. Uh, the next order of business is we have to schedule our next meeting uh, for the next matters. I believe we are all through with this. So should we go ahead and schedule that now or uh, by email? Vice Chair, I believe the consensus for the next meeting slash preliminary hearing for sworn complaints two zero. 23001 and that of Otsu as well. The consensus was February uh, 13, Monday, February 13. That's agreeable. What time is it? 8.30 a.m. 8.30, okay, so if we have consensus on availability, I would move that we schedule the next meeting for that time. Second. I have a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so that will be uh, scheduled and noticed shortly. Uh, seeing no other business, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, with that, let's go off the record. <clears throat> What can I carry? So you're feeling back today or uh, tomorrow? tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>